An earful of information is provided by a new evolutionary study that delves into the question of how humans acquired the ability to walk. By examining the inner ear of a fossilized ape dating back six million years, valuable insights into the evolution of human locomotion can be gleaned. Greetings everyone. Today's video focuses on a fascinating study that sheds light on the evolution of human movement. By examining the inner ear of a six million year old fossil ape called Lufengpithecus using advanced three-dimensional CT scanning, researchers have uncovered a three-step progression in the development of human bipedalism. Initially, early apes moved through trees in a manner akin to gibbons. However, the last common ancestor of apes and humans, much like Lufengpithecus, employed a combination of climbing, clambering, forelimb suspension, arboreal bipedalism, and terrestrial quadrupedalism. Without further delay, let us dive into our discussion. The incredible range of locomotion methods, ranging from bipedal walking to tree climbing and quadrupedal walking, is observed in both humans and our closest relatives, the living apes. For many years, scientists have been fascinated by the transition from a quadrupedal ancestor to the bipedal stance and movement of humans. However, previous studies and fossil records have not provided enough evidence to reconstruct a comprehensive and conclusive history of the early evolutionary stages that resulted in human bipedalism. A novel approach to studying the origins of bipedal locomotion has emerged through a new study that focuses on the recently discovered evidence from the skulls of Lufengpithecus, a six million year old fossil ape. By utilizing three-dimensional CT scanning to analyze the bony inner ear region, significant insights have been gained. Yinan Zhang, a doctoral student at the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, IVPP, and the lead author of the paper published in the journal Innovation, explains that the semicircular canals situated in the skull between our brains and the external ear play a crucial role in our balance and spatial orientation during movement. These canals are a fundamental element of locomotion, a fact that often goes unnoticed by most individuals. The size and shape of these canals are directly related to the movement patterns of mammals, including apes and humans. By utilizing advanced imaging technologies, we were able to examine the internal structure of fossil skulls and meticulously analyze the anatomical intricacies of the semicircular canals, thus shedding light on the locomotion of extinct mammals. According to Terry Harrison, an anthropologist from New York University and co-author of the paper, our research reveals a three-stage progression in the development of human bipedalism. Initially, early apes exhibited a tree-dwelling movement pattern that closely resembled the behavior of gibbons in Asia today. Subsequently, the last common ancestor of apes and humans displayed a locomotor repertoire similar to that of Lufengpithecus, utilizing a combination of climbing, clambering, forelimb suspension, arboreal bipedalism, and terrestrial quadrupedalism. It is from this diverse ancestral locomotor repertoire that human bipedalism ultimately emerged. Previous research on the development of ape locomotion primarily centered around analyzing and comparing the skeletal structures of the limbs, shoulders, pelvis, and spine. These studies aim to understand how these bones are related to the various locomotor behaviors observed in both apes and humans. However, the limited fossil record and the wide range of locomotor behaviors exhibited by living apes have posed challenges in fully comprehending the origins of human bipedalism. The unearthing of Lufengpithecus skulls in China's Yunnan province during the 1980s has presented scientists with a fresh avenue to explore lingering inquiries regarding the development of movement. However, the skull's considerable compression and distortion hindered a clear view of the bony ear section, leading prior investigators to conclude that the fragile semicircular canals had not been preserved. In order to gain a deeper understanding of this area, Zhang, Ni and Harrison, in collaboration with other researchers from IVPP and YICRA, employed advanced three-dimensional scanning techniques to illuminate and examine the specific sections of the skulls. Through this process, they were able to generate a virtual representation of the bony canals within the inner ear. 
These scans were then compared to similar data collected from both present-day and prehistoric apes and humans across Asia, Europe and Africa. According to Professor Shijun Ni from IVPP, who spearheaded the project, our examinations reveal that early apes possessed a set of movement abilities that served as the foundation for human bipedalism. The inner ear seems to hold a distinctive record of the evolutionary journey of ape locomotion, presenting a valuable alternative to studying the skeletal structure beyond the head. Nee further explains that the majority of fossil apes and their presumed ancestors exhibit a locomotor mode that falls somewhere between gibbons and African apes. It was later, with the emergence of Australopithecus, an early human relative from Africa, that the human lineage diverged from the great apes through the adoption of bipedalism. Through an analysis of the evolutionary rate of the bony labyrinth, the team of international researchers suggested that the diversification of locomotion in apes and humans may have been influenced by climate change, serving as a significant environmental catalyst. Harrison explains that the increase in glacial ice sheets in the Northern Hemisphere around 3.2 million years ago resulted in cooler global temperatures, which coincided with a noticeable acceleration in the rate of change of the bony labyrinth. This could potentially indicate a swift advancement in both ape and human locomotor evolution. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.